President Muhammadu Buhari was today seen in public as he went to observe the Friday Muslim prayers within the presidential villa. He was joined by some heads of agencies, including the National Security Advisor Baba Gana Munguno and the EFCC boss Ibrahim Magu. He was also seen chatting with the Director General of the Department of Security Services, Mr. Lawan Daura. There were concerns over his health when on Wednesday the Federal Executive Council meeting could not hold. Last week Friday, the Governor of Kaduna State, Nasir al Rafai, had advised people to reduce visits to the villa to give the President time to rest. Now it's no longer news that Nigeria's northeast region is in dire need of global assistance to overcome the fallout of the insurgency witnessed in the last couple of years. And as part of efforts to tackle this challenge, the International Human Rights Human Humanitarian Organization, Oxfam, is calling on the global community for urgent support while asking Nigeria's governments to do more to give every region a sense of belonging. The executive director of Oxfam International made this comment in an exclusive interview with our correspondent Ronke Raji on the sidelines of the World Bank IMF spring meetings in Washington, D.C. The minister is making progress on, on, on claiming back some towns, but the situation is that people are only safe in the towns the military is controlling. They are restricted. They can't even move several kilometers outside to farm. So the hunger is severe. They are depending on food aid, and I was calling on the international community to deliver more food aid because the people in the areas that are still inaccessible are probably starving because we don't even know their situation. And there's a lot of movement. When the military takes over an area, then people start coming there because it's safe. Others are coming from Cameroon. I met women who had just arrived and some who had been there for three months, the ones who had not even yet received a tent, who were sleeping in the open. So there's need for humanitarian assistance to come urgently. Nigeria cannot cope with this alone. The national community should support. But ultimately, the Nigerian government, which is a rich government, needs to put in long-term solutions to the conflict, to end the conflict, and to develop the area. Let's cross over to Abuja now. Here's Ivy Clem. Hey, Ivy. Hello, Ijoma. Serious concerns have been raised over the rising cases of kidnapping, thuggery, and ritual killings in Bauchi State. To salvage the situation, key stakeholders, including religious and traditional leaders, met with police authorities in Bauchi to de deliberate on safety and security measures. At the meeting, it was agreed that urgent steps need to be taken to address the situation before it worsens, including strengthening collaboration between the police and the community. These are religious leaders, members of various traditional institutions and groups gathered here with the Nigerian police and government to discuss safety and security issues confronting the state. Thuggery, kidnapping and ritual killings are top on the agenda. The Commission of Police says the Lame Bura Forest in Ningi local government area poses serious challenges to the fight against kidnapping as it serves as hideout for kidnappers. And more worrisome are the activities of thugs who are mostly instigated by politicians. The strategies we put in place, you can see that um, uh, we have ID, we identify certain places where there are uh, hot spots and then um, uh, uh, local government areas that are also a little bit um, uh, 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 hot, we also identify them and we are working on them. The government says it is reviewing existing laws to match present day realities while the Police Community Relations Committee solicits support from every citizen in the state to enable them get useful tips. We have supported and continue to support all security agencies with all the necessary logistics to ensure that they have achieved their goal. If they don't report to us, we cannot have report. We cannot cover everywhere. We don't have uh, 1,000 eyes. But the community has 1,000 eyes. So that is why we are encouraging the formation of community groups. Suggestions were made, and in the end, the security solution was thrown back to the community who should serve as watchdogs. Everyone is expected to know their neighbors, and landlords should not rent apartments to strangers 
without collecting all relevant information. A special board of inquiry set up by the Nigerian army to investigate allegations of human rights abuses against some army personnel has approached the National Human Rights Commission to partner with it. President of the special board of inquiry, retired Major General Abubakar Jibrin, said the move is to ensure that all allegations are thoroughly and impartially investigated to enable the relevant authorities to take appropriate action. He therefore asked the commission to furnish the committee with any case of violation that has been reported to enable the board investigate it. Director of the National Human Rights Commission Monitoring Unit, Mr. Tony Ojuku, told the board that the two agencies are already in collaboration on many levels that have yielded results. If uh, our earlier report was uh, restricted based on our own uh, understanding of what happened, based on internal investigation, now we want to go more public. So that is why I believe this uh, special body of Cairo was set up and definitely the military is trying to go this time public to make sure that uh, whatever allegation is made is uh, objectively investigation, uh, investigated and their report uh, rendered. The main reason why you are here today, yes, the commission is working in the northeast. The commission has uh, 24 state offices now covering both the northeast and the southeast where your interest lies in terms of uh, allegations of human rights violation. Already we have some uh, complaints which we have compiled. Uh, at the closed door session we'll be able to look at this uh, critically. But um, on a balance of, um, of issues, most of the complaints we have received already, like um, in the northeast, this was also reported to the military authorities. Some of them had already come up even before the court martial and treated. And that is a conscious effort to respond to military, uh, to human rights violations which have been passed already to the Nigerian military. The Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU Ambrose Ali University, Ekboma Edo State, has called for the immediate redeployment of the State Commissioner of Police, Mr. Hali Gwandu. The union members made this call while briefing newsmen in the state capital, where one of its members was allegedly brutalized. What can best be described as a cold war is currently raging between the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU Ambrose Ali University, Ekboma, and the Edo State Commissioner of Police. The whole episode started with the alleged brutalization of Professor Sandy Edeko, a professor of law in Ekmama, by the Commissioner of Police Special School. The news of the alleged brutality went viral, prompting this reaction by the Edo police boss. There was never a time the professor came to complain against any of my policemen. Again, while parading suspected criminals at the force headquarters in Benin City on Tuesday, the Edo State Police Commissioner told newsmen of the recovery of firearms from some senior lecturers at the Ambrosale University, Ekuma, whom he accused of murdering young cultists. We have recovered them from one Dr. Obo Joseph. His age is 64. Ambrosale University, Ekuma. One pump action, two double barrel gun, 26 live cartridges. The Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, Ekoma branch, is now taking these allegations by the CP lightly. The union bears its mind at this press conference. Well, the story on our university is not less for us and unfounded. It is also a calculated attempt to bring the name of this university to public ridicule. While vowing to pursue the matter to its logical conclusion, they want the Edo State Commissioner of Police to urgently to provide to answers to the following questions. When and where was this wonderful arrest of professors made? How come the Commissioner Disclosure of alleged discovery of 14 dead bodies is coming on the heels of reporters of our union over the brutal police brutalization of Professor S. C. Edeko. For now, the two parties in the matter insist they are acting lawfully. However, only time will tell 
of this tussle with the finally resolved. The U.S. ambassador to Nigeria has visited the site of some projects undertaken by Africa's richest businessman, Ali Kodangote. Ambassador Stuart Simington describes the projects as a reflection of the Nigerian people who are patriotic and loyal to their country. It doesn't yet look like it, but when completed, what's being constructed here will be the largest single train petroleum refinery in the world with a capacity to refine 650,000 barrels of oil per day. An ambitious project that will meet local consumption needs 100% and ultimately end Nigeria's fuel importation. The Dangote Group is also set to revolutionize the agricultural sector in Nigeria and Africa with the building of a world-class fertilizer project with the capacity to produce 2.8 million metric tons of assorted fertilizers to help the country achieve food security and to produce for the sub-region at a significantly cheap price. These world-class projects have not escaped the notice of the American government, and so the U.S. ambassador to Nigeria, Mr. Swartz Simington, pays a visit to the site of the Dangote project. The ambassador and his team are receiving by the top management of the company, led by the group executive director of the Dangote Group, who explains the numerous benefits of the projects. The team then moves to inspect the site, and the ambassador is obviously impressed. One of the reasons I'm here is because many of its partners are American businesses. It's setting its sights on four things. First, creating the, the highest quality product in the world. Second, doing that with the very best technology in the world. Third, making sure that the use of energy is the most efficient. And fourth, making sure that in addition to the good products that they make, uh, the, the impact on the environment is the best possible impact on the environment. He has seen what we are doing, is highly appreciative of what we are doing, and he has also promised to see well, anything which the U.S. government can do to support. Of course, primarily it's a private sector initiative, so obviously we are not looking for any basic support, but from the country, the U.S. Exim has been willing to do any financing for any procurement we are going to do from U.S. The Dangote team says all construction is going according to shadow, and the group is confident that it will deliver the refinery by the end of 2018 and all the other projects as scheduled.